If you've ever had questions about medical marijuana, you are not alone. I really think everyone is a good candidate, but you just want to make sure you get the right cannabinoids and right terpenes for you. Stay tuned for a conversation with Melinda Toussaint, family nurse practitioner and co-owner of Mary Care Wellness. You're listening to The Purple Stethoscope. I am your host, Devin Nixon, family nurse practitioner. None of the information in this podcast is sufficient nor intended to diagnose your personal medical issue, but there's a lot to learn, so let's start the show. Hi guys, welcome back to The Purple Stethoscope. A couple things that I wanted to clarify from the discussion last week pills and potions. National Medication Take Back Day is coming up this month, October 26, 2019. I put a link in last week's episode show notes for you to take advantage of uh, finding out how to safely dispose of unused medicine. I mentioned National Prescription Drug Take Back Day, but I didn't give you the date. That's October 26th. All right, now, I told you I've been looking high and low for the best of the best of the best. I'm bringing you a very special guest today, board-certified family nurse practitioner and co-owner of Mary Care Wellness. Melinda has been a licensed family nurse practitioner since graduating from Bowie State University in 2012, magna cum laude. Before starting Mary Care Wellness with her sister and fellow nurse practitioner, Bernicia Edmond, in 2007, Ms. Toussaint worked as a registered nurse in several specialties, such as emergency room, pre- and post-operation, medical, surgical, home health, wound care, and travel nursing, to name a few. She also served in the U.S. Army Reserves as a trauma nurse from 2008 to 2013, in which time she achieved the rank of first lieutenant. She also received training as a holistic health practitioner and master herbalist. Hey, Melinda. Hi, Devin. It's good to see you again. Same here. For the listeners, uh, give them your background, because I thought that was very interesting, um, what you and your sister have done. Like, introduce Mary Care and, and what it is you all are doing, education, your educational background, and otherwise. Okay. Well, Mary Care Wellness originally started um, as a college idea between my sister and her best friend. Um, Her best friend was an um, undergrad going to school for marketing and my sister for nursing as I was um, in school for nursing as well. And my sister was like, you know, I really want to have some type of business and all that. And, you know, they just came up with a bunch of different ideas, but never it never launched um, at all. And then about um, three and a half, four years ago, my sister brought that up to her friend, and but this time her friend and you know was taking notes and just started creating like a website, like just putting her vision on paper. And then for me, when they brought me in, I was like, I'll just do telemedicine because I've been in um, a lot of, you know, businesses and startups and all that. And I'm like, I know what it needs to, what it takes to be an entrepreneur. And I don't want that stress on my life. (laughs) I understand. (laughs) And at the same time, um, our dad um, said, well, since both of you guys are um, nurse practitioners, y'all need to go in business together. And, um, and I was like, I am not going to be an entrepreneur. I'm just not, he's like, well, I'm just going to put it together, just establish an LLC just in case of something, you know, if you guys change your mind, I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I'm not. And, um, so, um, in 2015, um, my family moved to Haiti and, um, to do a medical missionary trip. And at that time, um, my sister's friend and her friend, um, was like, you know, trying to put in the business and they're like, Melinda, all you have to do is a telemedicine, some admin stuff. And I was like, okay, I could do that. I don't mind doing that. And, um, 
And at that time, our friend was, um, she had a rare type of cancer and she was using cannabis to help treat her. And um, because it was legal in the District of Columbia and we saw how it was maintaining her and all, but her insurance, her disability told her that, um, you know, she'll, it seemed like she's doing well. So they were going to cut off her insurance. Um, and she was like, no, I'm not doing well. I've just been using my natural remedies and so forth. And, um, and all, but they're like, well, you had to do around a chemo or radiation or something like that. And then, so she agreed to, um, some chemo Mm -hmm. and her body rejected it and she ended up passing away. So since I was, um, you know, still helping out with the business, then I got thrown into it, had to learn how to do a website, do the administrative part, like everything. And then, so I like, um, stepped up so, and she um, was the one doing all of that. Yeah, she was oh, while I was um, in Haiti doing the medical missionary trip mm-hmm. with my family. And um, so I just end up, you know, we launched Mary Care Wellness in March of 2018. Oh, and um, we just hit the ground running because I was like, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to make sure it's good. And then so both my sister and I both took off. We both have a background um, also in um, health and wellness, being certified in that um, in natural medicine. And um, we've just been doing Mary Care Wellness since then. So in addition to being board certified family nurse practitioners, you and your sister got holistic medicine certifications. Is that right? The education that we got, it was a certified holistic health practitioner. So it was broad to treat any type of condition um, with like natural herb, natural remedy, homeopathic, and um, so forth. Um, You know, uh, so they just had different components in it for us to be able to practice without any type of medication, just using whatever God put on this earth to treat people. I love that so much because we don't get that training in our undergrad and graduate programs with nursing, even at the doctoral level, but I'm finding more and more the longer I practice, the more there's a need for both, not just the Western medical model and not just the naturopathic holistic kind of model, but often a marriage of the two. You know, I think about your friend and I think about how nice it would have been if she would have had the option to do what worked because chemo works for some people, but not everybody. And she found something that didn't, you know, fit into the system's idea of, you know, um, worthy of, of insurance and, and disability, but it turned out that was the right thing for her. We'll be back with more of this conversation after Community Rounds. Did you guys know that with every episode of The Purple Stethoscope, I include show notes? Show notes is where you can go to find links and helpful information on topics covered in the episode. For example, today, you'll find the link to Mary Care Wellness, Melinda Toussaint's company for medical marijuana. You'll also find a link, marijuanadoctors.com, to find medical marijuana providers in your area. Some of the conditions that are qualifying for medical marijuana use include cancer, HIV, multiple sclerosis, epilepsy or other seizure disorders, pain unrelieved by standard medical treatments and medications, glaucoma, Crohn's disease, hepatitis C with debilitating nausea, other diseases which cause nausea, vomiting, appetite loss, and cramping, as well as chronic renal failure requiring dialysis. Post-traumatic stress disorder and traumatic brain injury are also qualifying conditions. If you're curious if medical marijuana is a good choice for your condition, I encourage you to reach out for a medical marijuana doctor in your area 
So check out the show notes so that you can find someone near you. Now, back to the episode. Okay, well, the first part of our appointment, I always let the patient know exactly what's going to happen. So the first part is information gathering. And the second part is I'm going to educate you so that you will know how to um, pick out the proper cannabis based off of your condition. And um, since I gather the medical history, then I have a booklet, um, a patient journal that I go over with them. And I review um, about cannabis first, the, give them education about the, how, um, about the endocannabinoid system and what it does in the body, provide balance and homeostasis, and then give them a bit of education about cannabinoids. Um, as well. And the cannabinoids are the THC, the CBD, the three and four letter words in between. (laughs) Uh, There's over 120 different cannabinoids and they all have their unique ways of providing relief to the body. And also terpenes. Terpenes um, are what give cannabis its aroma, its taste, and also provide different um, types of relief. So For someone who has chronic pain, I go along with the patient journal, say, hey, as you can see for pain, THC, CBD, CBN, CBG helps with pain and inflammation. And also the terpenes like morphine and linalool and limonene and beta carophylline also help um, with, (laughs) I know those (laughs) words, right, Um, with pain and inflammation. And I tell them some um, terpenes are relaxing, um, some are more uplifting, and how to balance that. And also, uh, um, it's always great to have two types of products, a long-acting product and a short-acting product. The long-acting are the like the ingestibles, like oils, tinctures, tablets, edibles, gummies. And um, typically, the onset of relief is about... 30 minutes, upwards to two hours, because edibles hit you a little <laughs> later. And um, But the duration is six to 12 hours. Um, so that's pretty good, if you would ask me. Wow. And then also have a short acting, which is anything that you inhale or apply on the skin. So that's smoking, vaping, creams, topicals, and pack. A quick relief within seconds to minutes. And the duration of relief is also quick, about two to four hours. So therefore, I give them example, you're in chronic pain and you want quick relief. So you could either smoke or vape or apply cream in that area. But then you're not going to have long-term relief. So you want something, you know, to stack on it to continue that relief. Then I was like, then you do like an ingestible. You could do oil tincture, you know, gel cap or whatever it is to continue the duration of relief. And um, typically when my when I do their follow-ups, um, when I get my patient back, most of them will say that they're 80 percent or better and mind you my follow-ups are within three months that's amazing so I could give you so many stories of like how life-changing um cannabis has been in my patient's life all ages from the young my youngest patient is three years old my yeah. oldest patient is 96 in the 90s I would say Mm -hmm. and it has helped all of them significantly in such a short period of time now I have to go back on a couple things I'm over here scrambling notes (laughs) (laughs) because you said a lot and and I don't want you know to skip over anything um, because you know you're the expert so you're doing your thing but I'm over here like okay jot this down jot that down (laughs) You said there are over 100 types of cannabinoids. Now, someone listening might say, well, I tried marijuana once and it wasn't for me. So I don't think this type of a a supportive treatment would work for me. But then I hear you say there's over 100 types. So what do you say to the person who has tried marijuana in the past, maybe recreationally, maybe they had an edible and it hit them way too hard. I've heard that from patients that they got some edibles and they were so unbelievably, um, 
I don't want to say debilitating because they don't describe it as pain. They just describe it as too strong. What do Mm -hmm. you say to people who um, have those types of concerns? Well, I tell, um, well, the reason um, why I give them a patient journal because it has a chart. So they're able to go across and be like, okay, here's my condition. So here are the exact different cannabinoids that will help my condition and then same with the terpene and I tell them it's different when you um, use cannabis recreationally versus medicinally it's because you're more intentional medicinally recreationally typically is that you know they want to get high but they also find medicinal they're like hey I'm able to relax I'm able to focus I'm more creative or sleep better but Um, medicinally you're looking at these are the exact cannabinoids that will help with my condition and these are the exact terpenes that will help with my condition so when I go to the dispensary and I'm looking on the label I know I need this and that cannabinoids and this and that terpene um terpenes and um I say always get something with two or more because there's an entourage effect So um, when you combine two or more cannabinoids or two or more terpenes, um, they work synergistically together. So that means one plus one doesn't equal two. One plus one may equal four or five. So you're getting greater benefits when you combine more terpenes and more cannabinoids together. And um, I nearly guarantee you that you will find relief if you just follow the simple plan. Like, um, that's why I love natural medicine, because it's so simple, it's so broad, and you get side benefits. Instead of side effects, you get benefits because you'll that. take... <laughs> side benefits instead of side effects. Yes. What a concept. Right. So you might like... Um, you know, use um, this, uh, utilize this one cannabinoid. Like CBD is a great cannabinoid because not only helps with pain, it helps with inflammation, weight loss, regulating blood sugar, your nerve seizures, sleep, and so much more. So even though you're like, okay, I need the CBD to help with my pain or help my inflammation, but um, you might also see you're losing weight because it's normalizing your blood sugar. So you're not getting those intense cravings. You also see that you're sleeping better. Nice. Your mood is balanced because it helps with anxiety and depression. Um, your memory is sharper. Um, you're more focused and so much more. The list goes on and on. Like I literally, my front desk staff love <laughs> like seeing my patients come in because they're like, wasn't that the one who just, was like in a walker and wow. now just using a cane or wasn't that the one who's like hunching forward or wasn't that the one who had parkinson was shaking we could hardly even like sometime understand what he was saying and now like it's such a short period of time wow. seeing drastic changes and especially if they follow the basic with the long acting short acting and you know use them daily like a daily vitamin you're going to um balance your endocannabinoid system and be able to find relief for many different ailments. This is so cool because it makes it it makes it more understandable when people say I tried this or I tried that and it didn't work. It's like, oh, this is a science baby. This is not you just walk into the store and pick a couple of different things that sound good. There's science behind it and our bodies have a whole system to help um with this, these, I say medications, but I mean, what would you say? Would, do you call it medications or do you? Because there's still, I think, some stigma attached to marijuana recreationally or medicinally. I have older patients who are uh, very arthritic, um, people with neuropathy, people with, you know, issues that they, they're trying this and trying that and nothing's working. And I will suggest, well, have you considered seeing somebody for medical marijuana? And there is definitely still some stigma where people think, oh, no, not that. But when I hear you present it, this is natural medicine and it is science. And it doesn't sound like something that maybe most people will be successful 
going on their own. They really need someone like you and, and like your sister to provide the education, to provide the, the chart, you know, that's specific to their needs. So I love that you all are doing this. My listeners have heard me go off about vaping multiple times. And you did mention um, short acting uh, in the form of smoking, vaping, or topical creams. So I want to mm-hmm. touch on that um, for a moment because the vaping that I'm talking about, you guys, this is not natural stuff. <laughs> when, I, when I talk about, you know, the different uh, lung diseases and things that we're seeing from vaping, I'm talking about these watermelon flavored, you know, oils that nobody knows what's in them. But when you're talking about vaping, what are some of the ingredients in the oil, are all the ingredients known? Are there things that are mixed together that could cause a similar effect? I just want to make it plain for the listeners because I've said multiple times, don't vape, don't vape. But we're talking about something different in this case. Mm -hmm. Right. So there is a difference between um, vaping something that you got at a smoke shop or online or in the black market. Mm -hmm. Because think about it, you know, a lot of, some of us are opportunists, um, opportunists. And, you know, now cannabis has been legalized and um, especially with CBD, it's legal in all 50 states. So people are like, let me just get these cheap devices also oil, which um, not all oils are combustible. So oils and the proper oil that's in vapes are a special type of oil that you're able to inhale and the oils aren't getting trapped into the lungs. Mind you, lungs are mostly water. And then if you're in something that's primarily oil-based, like they've been putting um, like vitamin E, in it or yep. even using like uh, regular like let's say cbd or thc oil with that is um have mpc in it which is not meant to be inhaled only ingested and putting in the vapes and also when you heat up the vape you're also absorbing you know the metal or whatever contaminants that's in it and you're putting it into your lungs which is directly into your bloodstream so the oil is getting trapped in your lungs and you're um, ingesting those chemicals that weren't supposed to be ingested. At the dispensary, the, the legal um, um, medical cannabis dispensary, they um, it's laboratory tested. So they test their products and what um, whatever it's in contained in it. So um, they make sure it doesn't have like lead or mercury in it. Um, And also all of their um, what's inside the product is tested. And then there's a label, there's a batch number, and also um, the information of exactly who the manufacturer is. So I always tell my patients, even though you might find something cheaper online, but you can't put a cost to your health. You don't want to put something in your body that you don't know what's in it. So always look like at the label, make sure it's tested or has a Q scan code that you could scan it and see the testing information. Also it's hemp certified, you know, um, no GMOs organic and have all those certifications on it. If it's just like, you know, special leaf, (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I don't know whatever right. and then just have like 500 milligrams of CBD or THC or whatever I'm like don't trust it because you don't know who is manufacturing and how clean they are and they might have like a pet or just went to the bathroom and putting these devices together mm-hmm. and ugh, it's, it's I just scary. think about all that so. it's scary for sure but that's what we're here for you know that's what you guys are there for as professionals this is why I always tell patients because a lot of times when they bring it up to me they're like a little shy or a little nervous or embarrassed and I say no I would much rather you ask so that we can give you proper information because a lot of what's floating around online and word of mouth is not proper information so making sure to address the proper channels for sure um, mm-hmm. You also 
were talking about, let me see, I'm, I'm looking through my notes here. Sorry. <laughs> uh, yes, the terpenes versus the cannabinoids. Now, CBD is legal in all 50 states, um, but it's synergistic, if I understand you correctly, with the terpenes. Yeah, the terpenes. The terpenes, um, yeah. Yes, they do work synergistically together, and also it's legal to have less than 0.03% of THC. Okay. So that means there are some um, CBD isolates, that is just CBD only, that's it. They'll uh, put like a, um, terpenes in it to provide, um, you know, better relief and all, um, or sometimes they put different flavors, um, or... To have THC in it, which is called full spectrum. Full spectrum means, you know, um, multiple cannabinoids and also terpenes and other great um, benefits. I could go on, but I'm, it's going to sound like I'm speaking another language. So <laughs> let's get to cannabinoids and terpenes. So when people who have a sensitivity to THC, you know, consumes over 20% they could have something that's called THC-induced psychosis, um, which they could get more anxious and paranoid. Sometimes they get combative and so forth because really it's enhancing your perceptions. You're able to taste better, feel better, um, also hear better. Like your um, perceptions are, your sense your senses are more enhanced. So just think about if you could hear everything or feel everything and all like you could get a bit, you know, paranoid from it. So I always right. tell them, you know, do very low THC or none at all mm -hmm. um, and have CBD and then they do better. So those who have like um, my autistic um, children or even adults or those who are very anxious or stressed, um, that's, those are examples of don't please don't you know lay off on the THC you <laughs> might want to feel high a little bit that's fine um, per se but you really want to do it medicinally so you're intentionally trying to provide relief to whatever your issues are I really think everyone is a good candidate but you just want to make sure you get the right cannabinoids and right terpenes for you. Also, I definitely want to include what happens if you feel like you have too much. Thank Talk you about for edibles. saying that. <laughs> it's a thing. What to do? Yeah. Well, please don't don't let the first thing you do is call nine one one. First, I want you to take a very deep breath and just relax. Second, there's a, other things that you can do, um, such as take a cold shower. Um, eat some peppercorns, you know, go into your spice cabinets, eat some peppercorns because peppercorns are like the terpene beta caroline, which are balancing. So that will help with the head high. Also double your dose of CBD because CBD does not make you feel high. So it will decrease that high effect. Um, get some water. You can add some citrus to it, like lemon or lime or oranges, because those are just like the terpenes. Limonene, which is also will help reduce that um, head high down. You'll still get the effects of what you consume, but you won't like feel like you're about to have a panic attack or go on a mental trip <laughs> that you didn't <laughs> sign up for. Or lastly, just go to sleep. Go to sleep. Go to Don't bed. bother Just call anyone. Nine go to bed. Don't bother <laughs> nobody. Just go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> And just relax. Don't overthink it. Just, you know, understand where you are and be like, okay, I let me just relax, take a deep breath, and utilize those other mechanisms to help um, reduce that high. Um and because once it's out of your system, it'll be out of your system. So give it like a, a couple of um, hours to even maybe sometime days for some people. If they wow. took too much. Wow. Does sweating help? Like exercising? Yes. Yep. Even exercising, sweating it off and all, um, you know, taking a good run. Um, 
will help increase it. Also, don't eat anything fatty because it's stored in the fat. Oh so the more, goodness. if you have, um, um, if you're a bit more fluffy, <laughs> I'm really not trying to send anyone. No, no, it's or good information. Eat something fatty um, afterwards, the high is greater. Also, mangoes as well. It reuptakes THC because um, it's like the terpene um, myrcene. Um, so you'll feel high a bit longer. Wow, that is so much information, but such great information. Is is that that you described? Does that happen from eating or smoking or tinctures or is that just a specific type of ingestion where people get that um that what you were just describing yeah, feeling real hot yeah. it could be any form of just because every body everyone's mm-hmm. body is different and um so they they react to it differently because there's some days that you might need a bit more cannabis because you're more stressed and more active. So your dose is higher. I see. And then there are some days you're not as active and you realize you don't need as much um, cannabis. Um, and also it varies. That's why there's no sub- specific dose to cannabis. So I give people a range. I uh, inform them about, you know, the ca- cannabinoids and terpenes and also the endocannabinoid system, how it affects their body. And then I also tell them to journal, 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 journal. Um, start off with how you felt before, what route and dose um, you took, the onset, the duration, and then also how you felt afterward. And also save all the labels from um, what you received at the dispensary and put them in their journal. Or if you're not a journal, at least, you know, please save the labels because then, then you get to compare the labels of saying, oh, every time when I have this dose, I feel pretty good. Or if it's a little under, a little over, I don't feel as good. Or the this percentage of cannabinoids or, or terpenes and all, you'll start tracking it and get like a awareness, like a aha moment happens for a lot of individuals of like, okay, this is what works for me. I'm going to stick to it and all. And they typically continue to get great relief yeah 80 percent in three months i mean you can't yeah. really argue with numbers like that right and even some of my patients say is it okay if i say 100 percent?" i'm like if you feel like it's 100 percent, that's fine and the only time i get less than 50 percent is that they're not utilizing either the long acting and short acting together yeah. they're like, for instance, the heavy flower smokers, you know, the ones who really like smoking a joint all the time. And they're like, that's that's just me. That's just me. That's all I have. I'm like, at least try, you know, a tincture with it or a gummy. And also, you're not going through your product because you're paying cash for it. Yeah, <laughs> so you right. have budget aside for your medicine. Right. Look, mangoes. Right. <laughs> exactly. where, where can people find you online? Um, where can they find you in clinic? How do folks who want to get in touch with you get in touch with you from here on? Well, they could find me um, online at marycarewellness.com and it's M A R I. C-A-R-E-W-E-L-L-N-E-S-S. And also on Instagram and Facebook at Mary Care Wellness. Um, on Twitter, Ask Mary Care. I'm also on Marijuana Doctor. You go Google me, um, Yelp me. What else? I'm on a lot of different. So um, there's a directory <laughs> then, Marijuana Doctors. Yes. So I'm, I'm one of the providers on Marijuana Doctors and also Hello MD. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for sharing your expertise. I'm so excited for this information to go out and for people to learn about an adjunct to treatment or an alternative for treatments that are not working for them. It sounds like this one's pretty promising. Thank you so much for coming on. And we'll be in Thank time. you for having me. This is excellent. And I look forward to speaking to you again.
That was Melinda Toussaint with Mary Care Wellness. Y'all, I've got special guests lined up for weeks to come. So if you are not already subscribed to the podcast, go subscribe now at YouTube, at Podbean, at Spotify, at Apple Podcasts. Share with your family and friends because I'm bringing experts from all over the country pertinent information. You answered my questions. When I asked what you wanted to learn about, you all hit me back and I went out and found people that can provide the info that you're looking for. So make sure you won't miss out on an episode by subscribing. I will be back next week with another special guest. It'll be a great conversation and you won't want to miss it. Thank you so much for listening. I love and appreciate you and all your support. Check out the show notes for links, resources, and other ways you can support this. Thank you for listening to The Purple Stethoscope. I'm your host, Devin Nixon, family nurse practitioner. You can find me on social media at D the NP. That's on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and now Patreon. If you liked what you heard, go ahead and share this episode and then head over to Patreon to see how you can further support this work.